Hello and thank you for watching this video. I'm going to run through setting up a multiplayer game on Multiplay. I've started at the setup guide and I've already waited for Multiplay to be activated in the background and so I'm ready to integrate my game server and follow the steps in the setup guide. First I'm going to integrate my game server. This is a set of instructions on how to install the relevant package SDK or code snippets for your particular game engine or platform so that you can integrate with Multiplay quickly and easily. At the moment we offer instructions for Unity but we'll soon have instructions and packages for Unreal or custom engines. I'm going to be creating a Unity game for my Multiplay game and so I've already completed these instructions of connecting my Unity project to my game as well as installing the correct package from the package manager. Now that I've done that, next thing to do is upload my game server binaries. We do this in a thing called a build. A build is a collection of files that we will distribute onto different servers and start and execute them for the game server backend. I'm going to call this Battle Royale. I'm going to run it on Linux and it will be a direct file upload. We also support container images. After the build has been created, the next thing to do is upload the relevant files. So I'm going to drag and drop the files from my backend into this area and then upload. Depending on your internet connection, this can take some amount of time. Now that our files have been uploaded, we can continue finishing the creation of the build by creating the very first version. In the future, if we want to update our game binary backend, we can add files, remove files, or modify files, and then create a new version, which will then be rolled out across our fleet. Now that we've created our build, which contains all of the files for our game backend, we have to create a build configuration. We can have many build configurations for a single build because they instruct Multiplay how to actually run the build on a server. So I'm going to go ahead and create a build configuration now. Build configurations we encourage to use AB naming so that you can switch between one and another quickly and easily with zero downtime. So I'm going to call this one Standalone A. I'm going to choose the build that I've just created and uploaded files to. From there I can search for the particular executable. So I'm going to choose battleroyale.x8664 which is the executable to run. For the query type we support two query types or no query type. SQP is our primary and more recommended choice, although we do also support A2S. I'm going to use SQP for my game backend. Next we can configure our launch parameters, which are flags to apply to the binary at runtime. It's important that you provide the port, which is passed in as a variable at runtime, query ports, and log directory which all point to the correct and necessary numbers or folder directory structures so that you can make use of them. For our particular game, we need to apply additional launch parameters to make it run as we want it to. So I'm just going to paste in my launch parameters here. We're still making use of the log directory for our log file and the port for the server ports but we're also passing in additional things such as a server name, um, max players, a flags to tell our 
game server library that we're using Multiplay, as well as dedicated server and particular flags that are specific for a Unity engine game like batch mode, no graphics and FPS. In the configuration variables tab, we can provide additional variables alongside the launch parameters, which can change throughout a game server binary lifecycle, and then are exposed through the server.json file, which lives next to it. And finally, we want to specify our usage settings, which will tell Multiplay the ideal usage resources for this particular server. By providing these as accurately as possible, Multiplay can scale the system as effectively as it can. So we've successfully created a build configuration. Once again, a build configuration tells Multiplay how to actually execute the build, as well as what kind of usage settings that build will be using with the, that particular configuration. The next thing to create is a fleet. A fleet can contain multiple build configurations, which is where AB switching comes in with zero downtime, and also lets me configure the scaling settings, which is how many servers to run and when. I'm gonna call my fleet production. It's running Linux, and I'll be using the build configuration that I've just created. I will choose Europe as my region, as I am living in Europe at the moment, and I want it to be nice and fast for me. I'm going to set a min available servers of one. Min available servers means how many servers to start spinning up at a minimum so that there are pre-warmed servers that will be able to be allocated as quickly as possible. If there are no servers available on an allocation, a new one will be created, but at least one min available server means the allocation time will be shortened. I'm going to set a max available servers to 4. And this is really good to cap my spending so I don't produce too many servers. So to recap, I've created a build by uploading my game server backend binary files. I've specified how to actually run that binary. And I've specified how to scale that binary through build configurations and fleet. Now at this point it will take a moment for the fleet to provision all of the servers required to satisfy the minimum and maximum server requirements that I specified. And so I want to wait for that to happen before creating a test allocation, otherwise a test allocation may take some time. But in the meantime, let's recap. In the builds page, I can see my single build listed. I can modify and see all of the information, including the files and version history and its installation progress. The build configuration is showing me all of the configuration for this particular build, as well as its usage settings. And my fleet can tell me which build configurations are attached for when I want to allocate. I can see the scaling settings and I can see the analytics. Something to note with scaling settings, you might see in actual runtime more available servers than the max available servers configured. And this is because Multiplay is being as efficient as possible by filling up a provisioned machine with as many servers as can fit onto it. But don't worry, they will not be billed any extra. I'm going to return to the setup guide now. Now that my servers have been provisioned, I can create a test allocation. To create a test allocation, I need to specify the fleet, the region, and the build configuration that's in use. I'm going to run my test allocation and I can see that it's successful. An allocation comprises of an allocation ID, a server IP and port, and a time remaining, 
which by default is one hour until the server is automatically deallocated. Servers can be deallocated in other means by stopping the server or firing a deallocation request. Now that we've completed our setup guide, then we have a few extra steps that we can go on. We can start to integrate an, a matchmaker, which can handle allocations automatically. We can view our server list or read the documentation. I'm going to view the server list just to see that I have one allocated server, which has got an IPM port as such. And clicking on it, we can see more details about it, including analytics. We can see the events, such as it has started with the correct build configuration and the server logs as we have specified with our launch parameters. To confirm that we are, have created a server successfully, I'm going to run my game client. This is using the Battle Royale sample and the clever thing about this is instead of having to put in the server IPM port manually, it will actually automatically report itself in the server browser. And so here we can see the server has reported itself successfully and I can join the game. And here we are in the game as expected. Now if I go to the analytics and quickly change we can see we have one concurrent user, which is myself, and we can see the memory and CPU usage, which are a little lower than what I configured, but will peak as more players would join. I'm going to stop the server, which will force a deallocation. And now we can see that in here, I will be deallocated with a connection lost. And that's our game running end-to-end -end using multiplayer. Finally, we can go to the overview page as we've been uh, using this project for a little while now. And I can see that live and historical data is shown for concurrent users, crashes, and events. Again, if you go to the servers tab page and go to the logs, we can see our own logs from our game here, as well as looking at events to see what actions have happened, such as start and stop. I hope you enjoyed this demo and good luck with using multiplayer and I hope you make a successful multiplayer game. Thanks very much.